Welcome back. We're, uh, because I'm getting ready to go back down to the Bahamas, for those who don't know, I bought a lodge in Abaco last year, uh, and we're hosting a trip down there in April in case anybody wants to come fish. I will be bartending, hosting. Shortly after bartending, I'll probably hula dancing. Maybe. We'll see. But, at any rate, because of that, made me think we've never tied a salt, uh, saltwater fly. And I'm not exactly a salty sea dog, but I do know one thing. When it comes to bonefish, about everything on the planet started with a crazy Charlie. And so everything seems to be a morph of that, which makes it fun. I mean, I've got, this is, you know, a crazy Charlie here, which uh, Mr. Corrector Johnny went in and found out all the facts about it. And I always thought it was a shrimp pattern, but it's uh, actually started out as a glass minnow pattern. And... But if you look at, if there's 40 saltwater, you know, bonefish flies, virtually all of them have the same componentry, the same buildup, you know, everything's kind of the same. Not all of them, obviously, but if you look at it, there's just everybody's idea. It's kind of like a pheasant tail. There's a hundred different ways to do a pheasant tail. It's just everybody's got a different view on it. Uh, so I've been, only, I've only been tying these things for five years or so, and... But I, you know, and I kind of did my own thing with it. And then I looked down and the next, I, I started with these crazy Charlies and I just, yeah, I just wanted to play around, right? I just wanted to, I get so bored copying flies and stuff. So I did my own and I did one like this. And it was virtually identical to this fly right here. You see that? Yep. And so this is called the Bahama Mama, which I just ordered these the other day. I'm like, oh crap, that's the same fly I tied. So it, it's going to be hard to do much of a deviation off of this fly, and I'm not going to try. <clears throat> I'm just going to show you how I do it. These are they're super fast. They're super fun flies to tie, and and just freelance. Do something. Just play with it. Do something a little different or the same. Just add colors to it. And so basically, you know that's all. That's what this Bahama Mama is. I, you know I just I was just playing with them, and and every fly I did was virtually identical. This. And when I first started uh, doing these things uh, five years ago or so. And so, but at any rate, um, I was reading this article in 1971, just to see how diversity, this is in 1981, I think this was. Yeah, 1981, this is Fly Fisherman way back when. And there's an article in here, and it's about uh, blondes, which uh, if you go back in time, that's a, it's a Joe Brooks fly, right? And uh, can you see that right there? Yep. So it's a, this was Joe Brooks original. I mean, I've got a fly called the stack blonde because it was a big streamer for, for uh, trout. And so, but there's just all these morphs of that fly. And this is a brunette blonde. And this one is, uh, I was reading this article. The guy in here is talking about, he was the first guy to write a book about bonefish. And he was saying how important the drop was. That was his biggest, he, the drop was what it was about. So I'm gonna go over that kind of stuff right here. And so basically meaning how hard it hit the water, how fast it floated or sinks. I mean, if it hovers floaty, you know, on the surface, if it, you know, what it took to get it down. And basically that's all you'll see is, is your variance in these flies, billion colors, everybody's idea. But basically you should have a light fly and a heavier fly, you know, depending on the depth of the water, when your flats fill, if it's filling, dropping, whatever, how deep the, you're fishing. And so basically, I'm gonna do an offshoot of this Bahama Mama. And so I'm gonna have, uh, I've got two different hooks here. And, and again, these are really straightforward. I got an X4, uh, or X452, an 811, one's a Tiemco, one's a, a, Di, a Dairiki, or Daiichi, I mean. And one's light, one's heavier. Really simple. It's kind of like when you fish your wet flies. You know, you want two different weights of hooks. And you want them to, you know, it's just kind of old school. So I've got a light wire hook and I've got a heavier wire hook. On this one, I'm doing the heavier wire. Uh, and then I'm going to use bead chain eyes, which I don't I forgot to grab a pack, but pretty simple. They're just bead chain eyes. They're in my hand here. It's just, you know, for old pulls. And, and so this one's got bigger eyes, so you can carry two or three different sizes of eye, you know, tie with them. Uh, so there's not much to that. Then I'm going to have a body. I'm going to use UV tan on this one. When it comes to, you know, for bonefish uh, and a lot of saltwater stuff, it's a match the bottom thing. And so if you're in a lot of marl, you're probably going to have a little bit more greeny 
on your shrimp. If you're in the sand whites, it's going to be really light colored. You can have a little orange tint to them, a little pink tint to them. And it just depends on where you're fishing. So they're so easy to tie, so fast to tie. You know, I tie up four colors of them. If I'm not catching something, I put a different color on. It's not that tough. And so, and just, you know, if it's, make sure it's sinking the right rate so my eyes are right. And so basically I've got, and, and you can do this, where the, where this, Bahama my mama go? This thing here, I'll show you the body. This is a braid. It's like a crystal accent braid, a, a sparkle braid. And so, and I've seen people that like them to drop a little faster. They'll take these things and they'll epoxy them. I, I don't get that deep into them. I mean, if you want to, great, but you can use sparkle braid. I'm going to use, I love dubbing. I mean, it's just, I, I dig it. And so I got, I got versatility, but you can see here, this is a braid. It speeds things up. So there you go. It's, it's a really fast fly anyway. So I've got the braid and I'm going to use the, the UV. I'm going to mix a little bit of UV tan. I do a lot of tan because if you look at the naturals, they're really not, you, you aren't going to see that big a variation of, your, of the actual bug, <clears throat> but you're going to see tones of it. And so I start with the UV tan and I just add shrimp pink, UV pink, you know, light olive, whatever it is. And just, I just tan them up. It's no big deal. And so I'm, I'm today I'm going to do the tan and then I'm going to do the, uh, uh, what did I put in there? UV pink. And so, and, and, and about those UV colors, when you do that stuff, we just look at these, you look at these things and it looks like a bright orange. You put them up in the light and they change colors. So make sure you hit these things. Jeremy's always walking around with the UV light doing this. You know, hit the thing and see what color it turns, right? It'll be a, it's a radical change in the color of the fly. That's just hitting it with a UV light. And so the last thing you're going to have on there, or the first thing actually, is going to be your rubber legs. And again, play with it. Just, just, just add a little spice to the things, right? You can do whatever color you want. Nobody has any idea what, you know, every day is different. And so, you know, you might come up with a great combo for one flat and it doesn't work on the next, whatever. Just change it up. It's super simple. So the rubber legs, and I'm using the, the shrimpy, I love these. These weren't around. These are pretty new, the crab legs. And so what, basically what they are is they're tones of the actual colors that you'll find in the fish or in the, the, cra the shrimp. And so it's, it's pretty cool. I, I'm, I ordered all of them in. I just, I just been, like I said, tying them up every day, just different stuff. So where are we? And the last thing, uh, that's what I thought I did. Like, you know, we all think we invent stuff, right? I thought I was, you know, the first one to put that rabbit in there. Woo, radical. Because the original ones I saw had calf tail. That was a crazy Charlie. And then the gotchas and some of these, and I just, uh, the different flies. And it, this one just has rabbit underneath there. And I just gave it a little kick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to two-tone it just because it looks cool. Nothing, you know, might not catch fish as good, but it looks cool. So, and, and they're fun. Like I said, you can tie a billion of these things. So, get that stuff out of the way. We're going to start here. I'm using a 10 knot orange thread. This is Roman Mauser 10 knot. I like the thin threads with the, with the uh, bead chain eyes because I can, uh, you can cinch down. You can't break this thread anymore. It's virtually impossible to break it. And I get more turns. It's just tighter, you know. And so, I wax the thread first. I'm going to set this base of thread all the way back. And I do it all the way back for a reason. Uh, when you tie on, when you tie rubber legs on a, a bare hook, they just tend to move a little bit more. If you've got a nice wax thread build up right here, uh, come all the way back and put our eyes on. And then, uh, don't let me forget this little fly right here. We're gonna have a little short talk about that. Uh, I might as well do it now. <laughs> When I was talking about this to Jeremy about these flies, I said, you know, that they, they look a lot like what we used to fish in the Great Lakes. Uh, you can barely see this, but this fly is one of the, in the Great Lakes, we used to fish a lot of, which were very, we kind of were copying the, the or I was, the Crazy Charlie kind of, a kind of a half shrimp, half Crazy Charlie. And because the shrimp, or not the shrimp, the crayfish in the Great Lakes, are when they're juvenile, they're really tiny. And those things go in and just, filter feed these things, man. You see them, they just suck them out of the rocks. And basically all we did was this without the little wing and with the bead chains, the same thing. Uh, I'm not so certain you couldn't fish that same fly in the salt water, probably worked just as well. <clears throat> but anyway, for the Great Lakes, 
people or any place that you fish carp, we're fishing for carp, any place you fish clear water carp, that really pale, basically the same thing, it's got two little rubber legs on it, it don't even have to be that long, and then just, I like the segmented body with the, that's why I like this stuff, this uh, dub in my own, and eyes, man, it's, they just ate that thing to death. So, I've got, this is a good little trick, if you use a lot of, uh, if you use a lot of bead chain eyes, they're magnetic, it's a little round, you probably can't see it, but it's a little round magnet, it doesn't have to be round, be square, it doesn't matter. And you set it there, and you can roll them up, they'll just sit there, and you can grab, you can take your fingernail, and you can grab them really easy, they're not rolling all over the place. Now these are going to go on the top, and this is a, this is the heavier wire, and so... Ideally, I would have a next size eye on here. Match these however you want. If I was doing, and you don't actually have to have eyes if you want a really light one. But this one's got the heavier wire. I still got the lighter eye. Uh, you know, you can go eighths. You can go whatever size you want. But it's all about watching the thing drop. And because, you know, and that's just something you got to get used to. You can go out anywhere in any water, throw it in, see how the descent is. Because it helps you, you know, when you're, when you're timing your fish coming in and you're watching, you see them coming, you don't want to throw it out there and have it sitting above them because they're bottom feeders. And you want to sit down there so fast that, you know, it plops down and it sits there for a half hour and it's in the mud. So you just kind of learn what you like, the, you know, what size eye you like, how fast you want it to drop. And so I'm just figure eighting that. And then once I get it figure eighted, I'm going to come in here underneath it and I'm going to squeeze down really tight and I'm going figure eight. And then I go under the eyes and over the hook like that. And just squeeze it down pretty much no they're not going anywhere so now i'm going to take this these rubber legs and again this is just this is completely for fun right you're gonna i'm gonna put these in so when i put these first ones in you can see they're two-tone you can probably see it better in the package um, they're two-tone they've got a, a, a light and a dark and so i'm going to take the tone because if you look at the if you look at the shrimp, they've got these the, this little orange tip on the end of these things, and they and it shows. And some of them it really shows up. Some of them barely see it. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut most of that off, and I'm going to tie in. So I've got just a little bit of this white, and I'm going to tie it in right here. Leave you forward. I'm going to cut him off right behind the eyes. Get back up there where I belong. Cut him off. You can leave those on and, and, and bring them back later if you want. Or I think it's a pain in the butt to do that. And I like to get these things stretched out just a little bit, especially when I get down towards the end. I stretch. I'm not pulling hard, and I'm not and I'm not wrapping hard with my thread. You don't want to really crush these these silicone legs because they'll, one they'll twist, and two you you do them really hard. You're going to cut them off, especially using 10 knot thread. I like it to come down around the hook just a little bit, around the bend of the, the hook right here. You can see I'm, I'm not putting much tension on these so I can manipulate them. It's better to do kind of a light wrap. I kind of figure eight over it. I, I just don't want to put a ton of heat on it right there. See, they're hanging down. That way when it sits on the bottom, when this thing flips upside down, they're going to be up just a little bit and they're going to move. And so they'll be up just slightly like that not straight out and flat on the bottom. Now I'm going to take that stuff going everywhere here. Now I'm going to take this thing, this dubbing loop. This is our rising dubbing loop that uh, we, this thing is my favorite tool for dubbing ever. So I'm going to move forward here. I'm going to go right, oops, go right past the eyes, right behind the eyes, I mean, and I can hook that and do this in a second. Get over here. Day. A gentleman wrote in and said, Kelly, you know, you could hook that on your, your tensioner over here, but I'm too lazy because I broke mine off and it's gone. <laughs> That's why I don't use it. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take this. This is the UV tan. This is what it said but I use on almost all mine and I just blend them. That's really probably overthinking this so much, but it, it's fun for me, right? It just gives a little bit of character and I'm going to take that and I'm going to take one third, two thirds is how I do almost all my dubbings. I got a little piece of hair in that one. And so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to really lightly lay this on top of it so that it's basically, you can't, I'm sure you can barely see that. 
there's a little bit, there's two thirds of the tan, one third of the orange, and it's just gonna be, it's just gonna give me a little bit of hint of color to that, not much. So while I'm talking, it spun all over. So open your thread up, get a couple extra turns. Open your thread up, come in here, lay this in here. Not a lot of tape are involved with this. If you look at one, they're pretty much identical on each end. And so you're not worrying about making a, a taper much. So just get it in here, wrap it around. And now you can see what you're going to see when I do this. And you can do this with dry fly dubbing. I do. I've done a lot of videos on this for, uh, for your nymphs. If you do this two-tone and you always do your light and dark, your dark's always your one-third. And so you come in and watch what that does. Now you look at that thread and you can see it starting to variegate. It's starting to get a chenille look like it's two-toned. And so I've got a variegated looking body and that's what I was looking for. I'm looking for a segmented looking body because they've got little, you know, the, the little carpus thing on its back there's all segmented. And then, then you got legs underneath there. So I'm gonna come forward right here. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a figure eight. Oh. Drop the thread. If you're not using a, come right here. If you're not using a uh, rotary, you can just do it like this. Just and remember that the bottom of the fly, you got to turn your fly upside down to see the end of it. Okay, we got out of control here. Come back forward. And drop that loop. So basically, we're almost done with this thing. So now I'm going to take the other legs, which are right, what I did with them. Here they are. And so I'm going to take these and I'm going to, I'm going to put these in so that they hang back and the oranges meet. All right. And I'm going to tie that in. I'm going to have the, I'll make it easier to see. I'll turn it upside down. So I'm going to have this, get up there. This set of legs, I'm going to have the white part up here. And I have just the tips go back there. But I want, I want to have plenty of that white showing. This is just completely for fun. There's, it, it wouldn't make any bear. I, I guarantee you wouldn't even need these legs in here. And so, and on some of these, by the way, I'll put, so I'm not, I'm not, this is not, not how you do it. But some of them I tie in right here behind the eyes. Don't know why. Some of them I go forward. Don't know why. But I've got both in the box. It's just, like I said, they're super fun, super easy to tie. And so, and fast. So now I'm just doing a build up here. I'm going to take these legs and I'm going to cut those so just a tip of that orange is there. And it's going to, when, it, when it's pulled, these things are going to hang back like this and they're going to come back, just look right beside them, another color. Now I'm going to take this two tone, uh, uh, what is this? This is uh, Tiger Bard. Um, you got to have Jeremy back there to correct me. Johnny gave up on me. Jeremy still, Jeremy still helps. Only sometimes. Only a little. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this. And again, this was, I do this on all mine. I use this either the dose tone, the two tone, or the tiger bar, which is three tone. And what you can see here, you know, up close, you can see that it's got the little orange tip. And that's one of the predominant things you see in a lot of the, uh, a lot of the shrimp is that little tip of orange out there. And so I don't know if it makes a difference, you know, I've got buddies who say, you know, none of it makes any difference how it pulls, how it does this. It's fun. <laughs> it just makes it fun. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to lay it right over top of these legs so they stay split when they're swimming. I'm going to do this so I look at it. I want this orange tip to be over the, the past the bend of the hook so it's out behind the, you know, hanging out there, kind of moving around. So I've got it cut. I'm just going to cut it back here. Hello, Ellie dog. Stay down. Oh, you're going to interrupt. <laughs> Beat it. Yeah, you're a good kid. This is Ellie. Ellie doesn't get to go to the Bahamas. Hello. I know. I love you too. And so, tied that in. Sorry. Uh, tied that in. Just going to clean it up. Pull it back just a little bit. Clean that eye up. Again, just nothing to it. Come in here. Kind of rough on that head. But we'll clean it up. Finish it off. Boom. And so not much to it. And if you want, you know, that so that when that gets wet, that all that orange will be back there. And that's supposed to be kind of a little carpus, you know, a little back cover. 
can come in and you can fuzz these out a little bit if you want, you know, just pick it with your bodkin. But there's really nothing to it when you see it. So when these things get wet, they're going to be down like this. Get his little tips of those things back. So it's going to be down like that. Its legs are going to hang back. These are going to pump just a little bit. They don't have legs like this. That's why they don't have legs that pump back and forth, but they like that movement for some reason. And so you get a little bit of shine, a little bit of reflection, just a really fun fly. I mean, you can tie, you can tie these things just about as fast as you can do a, anything really. I mean, it's when you get used to it. So again, it's a, I think most of these things are just a offshoot of the crazy Charlie, the, all the gotchas and this, there's behind, all of the things that are, they're just, they're just all variations of the same thing. Super fun to tie. Like I said, we're hosting an April trip. I'm hosting an April trip down to the lodge. We'll put something on the, we'll put something on here on how you can link to it if you want to join us. We only have room for nine, so uh, there aren't many spaces left. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.